full of true rain Make a cup of coffee and ask them all to stay All these ugly goons, all these deadly dunes make Hi everyone, welcome to Game Latte. This is going to be the first official episode and we are going to talk about Folklore which is a PlayStation 3 uh, role-playing game. Uh, it came out uh, very early on. It was one of the original titles for the platform, I believe. Um, I know when I was awaiting the PlayStation 3, I remember there wasn't that many RPGs for it and it was kind of disappointing, along with the, um, the inflated price tag, in my opinion anyway. Uh, which is why I didn't get the PlayStation 3 when it first came out. Although I remember hearing about Folklore and seeing previews, and I just, I was really intrigued by it. And it took, you know, all these years to finally get around to playing it. When I first got my PlayStation 3, which was about three years ago, I think now, two or three years ago, and, uh, you know, the, the, the Slim came out, the price came down. So, and I really wanted one, so I was like, all right, I'm just gonna go get it. Plus, Final Fantasy 13 was on its way out. It was announced, so I was like, oh, I have to get a PlayStation 3 now. So I did, and uh, I was looking for folklore. I actively went and looked for it on Amazon, and it was $70 from overseas, not more than that. And it was, it was kind of crazy, so I was like, well, I'm not gonna pay that much for it. And especially since the reviews I heard, um, you know, conflicting reviews, some people really liked it, and then some critics just uh, couldn't stand playing it, um, especially since you had, you have to replay some of the missions over twice, not some, you have to play all of them twice, because there's two main characters, it's Alan and Keats, and if you, you know, in order to complete the story, to complete the game, you need to do every, every, you know, it basically, there's one story and there's two sides to it, two viewpoints from each character. And uh, you can't progress to a certain point without without having done all of it. So, and I know some people were kind of, you know, irked by that. But, um, so I wasn't sure what I was going to get. And then I seen this copy was on sale at, a, at Zellers. It was in a sale thing for 20 bucks. So I'm like, well, I have to get that now. Now, folklore is actually quite common. You can find it in your Best Buy or Walmart or Zellers or whatever, and um, it's it's pretty cheap now. So you can also rent it. Uh, I recommend just buying it since the price point is so low, and it is a good buy. Also, there is DLC downloadable content for this title, which took me by surprise, considering how long ago this came out. And DLC hasn't really hit the uh, the mainstream since about maybe two years ago or so, right? I think. But uh, I know DLC is pretty big now and there's many controversies and debate about that. Um, but uh, for Folklore, there is stuff. There's two free DLCs, the Santa outfit, and I can't remember what the other one is. But, and there's uh, extra quests as well that you can buy. I think they're like $2. They're pretty cheap. They're pretty cheap. They're not like a $7 you know, Bioware DLC, we're not going to get to that. Uh, <laughs> but, um, so more about folklore. Basically, the way this plays, I'm going to talk about the mechanics first, and then I'm going to talk about the graphics and art style, because that's a bit more up my alley. So the gameplay, it, 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 it's really interesting. When I first started playing it, I thought it was really easy. I thought this was going to be just more of an interactive comic book narrative that you follow more than a game and I was proven wrong about I think the third chapter in the third mission I was then it, things got really challenging so don't judge this game um, from the tutorial from even the first chapter because it's really misleading uh, what's cool like I said before is that it uses the motion the six axis motion in the controller so basically uh, as a protagonist, you go into a place called the Netherworld, which is the afterlife, essentially, and you have to fight these creatures that are called folk. And folk have um, elemental affinities, so it's kind of like playing Pokemon. Basically, you fight them, and then when, um, when the opportunity arises, you have to motion with your controller and suck in their soul. And then you gain that creature in your power pool, and uh, and you can fight other creatures without 
with that power with with um, the folk you just collected. So it's a bit like Pokemon, where you know you collect all these these Poke animals, and then they all have elemental affinities. So some of them are stronger against other ones. So uh, Alan and Keats uh, have the same ability. They both absorb folk into their their own power, but um, uh, they. It's a little different how they use it. Uh, Keats is much more hack and slash, very much more, uh, how you call that, um, you know, warrior type. While Ellen is uh, is a bit more ranged, I guess, and a bit more magic oriented. Um, so you can stand back further with Ellen and just deal damage from further away, while Keats is kind of more into your face. <laughs> so, which is kind of co cool because if you're going to be playing you know, a mission over again, um, it's good to have that different dynamic, definitely. And um, now the, the point of each mission is to beat a boss called the Folklore. And the Folklore is uh, basically a hidden memory, I believe. And I'm not going to tell too much about it because I'm not going to put in spoilers in these. But uh, yeah, so so you beat the, 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 the Folklore, you absorb their ID, their power, and then... Uh, and then it, that opens up the next chapter. Now, the main story of folklore is is kind of a, it starts off as a murder mystery. It's kind of creepy. It's eerie. I say it's it's a little bit Tim Burton esque, which I thought was really cool. I, I really enjoy, you know, that style. I like horror, but I don't like, you know, really scary horror. I'm not uh, an um, Bioshock fan or anything like that, uh, Penumbra or you know, and those, any of those really really scary titles. Um, not a fan of. However, this is a bit. Uh, I can take this. <laughs> this is cute, but it's also creepy and it's uh, it's very interesting. So the story is a murder mystery. You uh, you know you have to go to the village of Doolin and find out about Ellen's past and what's happened to her. She's basically lost her memories when she was a little girl. And you have to uncover, you know, what happened. And uh, and there's murders that happen during the gameplay. And it's, you know, it's like kind of a bit like a, a game of Clue. We have to figure out who the killer is as well. So who done it a little bit. And, uh, you know, I find I was very impressed with how the story turned. Because I thought I had to figure it out halfway through the story. And I ended up being wrong. And uh, which was surprising and, and real, really cool. I like being surprised, especially the JRPG, because, you know, sometimes the plot lines can be either very, very convoluted, where you have no idea where it's going on anymore, or it can be really, really simple, where you're like, oh, that was pretty cool. Uh, the other thing, too, about um, well, speaking of JRPGs and their quirks, is that this game has one massive plot hole, I found, which was really annoying. Um, if if you know, this bothers you, that might actually tarnish the game for you, but if you can look past that, then um, the story is still stand on, on its own, sort of. And it's it's a very enjoyable game. It's, um, I would recommend it just because of the gameplay is fairly unique. It is a little bit hack and slash, but there's a lot of strategy involved, and there's a lot of using the environment. Um, and by using the environment, I mean, like, you know, hiding in corners and things like that and figuring out where to stand and unleash your power because, you know, if, if you don't do things correctly sometimes, especially in the harder bosses, you're going to die many, many times. <laughs> so uh, overall, I highly recommend this game. It's, it's really fun. It was really different. It's not very long. You know, uh, one playthrough is about, I'm going to say, 15 hours. It's more if you do absolutely everything. If you're a collector and you, you know you want all the folks and you collect them all, or uh, you want to com complete all the, the hidden um, treasures and quests and stuff, then it's probably gonna take you over 20 hours. So that, that's a pretty good length. And the story's great. And that's about all I have to say about folklore, I think. If I miss points, I'll try to put it in the description below. But, um, and I'm going to post some screenshots as well. So that's my take on folklore. Um, very cool, very interesting. And uh, I'm not going to say it's epic, but it's, it's memorable. This is a memorable game. Also, I have an announcement to make. 
Game Latte is going to be partnering with GameDames.com, which is a podcast about gaming from the female perspective. It is a, a very interesting podcast. It is um, very entertaining to listen to, and it is hosted by two fabulous ladies, Dana and Leela. So please go check them out. And I will be doing an exclusive bi-weekly vidcast for them. So stay tuned for that, and um, there will be links in the sidebar. So thank you very much, and I will see you next time. Bye. Don't run away from your fears. Be yes, one with them. Don't run away from your